Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, Joseph, Joseph Harris, we, uh, if we can all stand to our feet, I'm just going to get us to pray together for Joseph Harris. He's on a trip to New York to, uh, in a competition as a, uh, as a chef. So we're really hoping that the Lord just gives him favor. Yeah. If, if, if uh, the, that the Lord just give him favor and uh, there's like a large first, pray, first place prize. And I think it'd be awesome for him to be able to win that and uh, just bless him and the kingdom of God. So uh, let's do ourselves a favor today. And knowing that this is the weekend of Thanksgiving, I want you to start out today by stepping in to a, to a heart of thanksgiving, gratitude, thankfulness. Lord, we come into your courts with thanksgiving. We come into your gates with thanksgiving and your courts we come into with praise, Lord, saying this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, if there's anything that keeps you from being glad today, it's not of God. We just lay it at his feet and say, we come, Lord, we come with fresh hunger. We come with fresh ambition and, and passion for you, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for filling this place with your praises, Lord, because you inhabit the praises of your people. You inhabit, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people, Lord. We build a throne for your presence, Lord, your abiding presence. We thank you, Lord, that you come down, but not only do you come down, but you set captives free, you transform hearts and minds, Lord. You shift the atmosphere, Lord. You raise the dead. You cast out demons. Lord, we thank you for all that you do when you come into the room, Lord. So we give you all our attention. Come on, all our attention belongs to you, Master. Master, Savior, all our attention, all our devotion. Lord, we just lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. You're worthy. More You're worthy. Voice. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, All right, let's let's get yeah. our thanksgiving in. Praises be heard. Come Thank on. Thank you, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord. Get some drums on my monitor, please. Whoa. We come to you in earnest. We come to you in earnest in thanksgiving. In thanksgiving, we come to you in earnest. We come to you in earnest. In thanksgiving, and thanksgiving, holy Lord, your holy Lord, your holy Lord, your holy Lord. Holy Lord, Holy Lord, Holy Lord, 
Such love, such love this is for me. Such love, such love, such love this is for me. Such love, such love. Someone who makes 
to the Lord. He wants to hear his children cry out for him. Daddy!
touch our lives. Come touch our lives. Come touch our lives. Come touch our lives. Come touch our lives. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are the way. surgery and hearts right now. Come on, Jesus. We invite you, Lord, to be the way, the truth, and the life in each man and woman in this place, Lord. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are the way. Why don't you guys say that out? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. Do your heart a lot of good. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are the way. Bless your heart good. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are the way. Come on, just walk through that conviction. You are the way, the truth, the life. You are the way. Keep going, keep going. I feel things breaking right now. You are the way, the truth, the life. Are we following you well, Lord? You are the way, the truth, and life. You are the way. Master, Master, you are the way, the truth, and life. You are the way. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and life. You are the way. You are the way. take your neighbor or I didn't even say how deep can he take your spouse I didn't say how deep can he take your kids I asked how deep can the Lord take you today because it's personal when I say that I don't want you thinking of anyone but you and the Lord how deep can I take you today come on Pastor David how deep can he take you today come on pro team how deep can he take you today come on we get lost in our assignments worship team how deep can he take you today we get lost in our assignments it's not our assignments that rule and reign but it's Jesus it's not the fact that we made it to church that please him it's the heart that brought us here today Come on, how deep can he take you today? How deep? How deep? Heart surgery, Lord.
expose all things to us, Lord, today. Expose us. Expose us. Deeper, Lord. How deep will you take us? How deep will you take us? Only as far as you'll allow me. Only as far as you'll allow me. How deep, how deep, how deep will you take us? How deep, how deep. How deep will you take us? Only as far as you let me. Only as far as you let me. Only as far as you let me. We'll take us deep. We'll take us deep. We'll take us deeper. 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 Take us deeper, so take us deeper, 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 deeper, deeper.
bless your mind. There's only one word to describe, and only one word comes to mind. There's only one word to describe, and only.
for a church that knows the holiness of their God. Familiarity needs to break off the church. It's good to call him Papa, but remember, Papa's also creator. Papa's also the one when Lot's wife turned back to look, she turned into a pillar of salt, just seeing a small hint of his glory, just a hint of judgment just a hint Moses asked to see the Lord so close with God he wasn't eating or drinking for 40 days he said can I see your glory and God said no man can see me and live God's ultimate goal is that we would see him and become like him no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me it's time for the church to rise up in resurrection life by seeking the beauty of holiness and not the beauty of a half life, a life half given, a life half lived. There's no life that's half lived. It's all or nothing with him. He's either married to you, he's either master, or you have someone else in your life right now. I don't know if you noticed the themes holiness we start out with thanksgiving and within moments we're in a place with god where it's it's just last year's last week it's joy and this week it's holiness i mean god likes taking us on these wild rides but we're we're eager to hear the voice of the lord what he's saying to the church today Will you yield your heart to holiness? Or you, will you continue to compromise in your lifestyle? See, most people mistake God's mercy 
they mistake God's mercy for God's acceptance when God holds wrath back it doesn't mean he thinks it's all okay and I believe that this church is called to have disciples that represent him so well that when they go out into the marketplace they'll want to know who your God is because of the exploits and what you carry and you can't carry the presence of God if the inside of you is divided so Papa we thank you Lord for holiness we thank you Lord for the whole word rightly divided Lord we're not afraid of everything you've spoken your word we don't try to explain away tough things but we embrace all that you are We accept all that you are. You know, the judge is Papa. And Papa is the judge. And if you forgot that he was the judge when he was Papa, you miss who he is. says let the prophets prophesy by two or three and I just felt like the Lord had I was thinking about what he was putting on my heart and I said should I share that because it's a kind of a hard word and then David got up and began sharing it and the Lord gave me scriptures out of Hebrews we need to understand that the grace that God has given us is wonderful and the forgiveness that he's given us is one time for all it's beautiful and that the way that people come to God is by the love we have one to another and that's a wonderful thing but God also says hard things God has requirements and there are those among us that think oh this grace is so wonderful so we can just go out and still we get high God will forgive us we screw around God will forgive us we do this we do that we have these moral errors God will forgive us we all have weaknesses but I fear the living God. I fear the living, and I want to share a scripture with you. If you don't, if you haven't studied the book of Hebrews, you may not know. God says all these cool things, all these nice things, but He has certain requirements for those who have committed themselves to Him. And if you look in the book of Hebrews, in chapter ten, it says, "Therefore, brethren, well, no, skip down from that." Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. And that's why we come together. It says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together so that you can encourage each other. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day draw near. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer a sacrifice for sins but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of fire which will consume the adversary. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severe do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and who has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace? For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again, the Lord will judge his people. It's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now, we don't often preach this in church because we don't want to scare the young of the flock, but it's in the Bible, and those of you that have committed yourself to him, that is what he requires. There are preachers that we know of, there are testimonies of preachers who have been cut off, who've fallen down dead because they didn't obey God or began doing something that God hadn't told them to do. Prophets, the same way. Evangelists, anybody that's walking in a place of accountability with God. And when it comes to your personal life, 
as much as God loves you. We are not to condemn each other. We meet together to encourage each other. But God is a righteous judge. Do not fool yourself into thinking God does not require holiness, which means he purifies and sets us apart. He puts the coal to your lips and puts the spirit of God in you. And that same spirit that makes you feel so wonderful and changed and delivered and joyful and loving requires that you continue to walk in it and stay set apart from the world. Separated from the world. Think about it. And he'll teach you. <laughs> That's good. Blake, I think you have something to share. Is it to share? Or was it just for me? Okay. So when people speak, I, I honor people that speak. And if you're the kind of person when somebody grabs the mic, it doesn't grab your attention, then you should probably check your heart. Because when somebody speaks under the the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's not for you to judge rather the Holy Spirit. It is for you to judge rather it lines up with the word of God. That's what it is for you to judge. See, most people are trying to judge if it's the Holy Spirit or not, which means basically do I agree with it in my emotions? You're supposed to be judging if it lines up with the scripture, not if it agrees with your feelings. And sometimes that's tough because, you know, there's conflict there, you know, and we want, we want to say that's okay, and that's what we're here for. We're here to learn together. We're here to instruct together, and we're not afraid of these scary scriptures. You know, they, they, might, they might do us a lot of good to realize that, that God is not only a rewarder, but he's a judge. And I'll say that all things have been judged as far as sin on the cross, but, you know, you heard pretty much out of, out of Hebrews 10 some really, really good things for you to digest, chew on, and decide how do I line up with this word of God? How do I line up with this word of God? And I'll say this, guys, because it, it is a little confusing. The Bible says that we need to be in the world, but not of the world. So have you ever thought about the difference maybe between in and of? It's like I can be in the world. In other words, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be part of what's going on, but I'm not supposed to be integrated in my lifestyle. I'm supposed to be set, up, set apart in the way I look, but integrated. Hold on, let me say this again. Because the way I look might confuse you. Like Joseph shaved up his head and went to prophesy to Pharaoh looking like an Egyptian. So I'm not talking about the outward look, which some people consider holiness in the old time church. So I'm not talking about skirts and long dresses. I'm talking more about the heart that makes you wear revealing things versus the revealing thing itself. You get me? So God looks at the heart, right? So, so holiness isn't what we live. It's the heart in which we live from. Amen? So thank 